Good morning guys, Unfrequented World, and it is Computer Tech Day. This will be the saddest day in Gary's history. I have decided finally, I'm tired of waiting for new computer parts, which I can't get. So today we're going to build a new, old computer. Now Stan was asking me, is this like applying hemorrhoid ointment? I said, well, kind of. It comes in an applicator, but... So there's the old system there, and we're going to end up cannibalizing it. I cannot get a CPU, I cannot get a GPU, so we're going to take those two things out and essentially put those two parts into a new system. Everything else will be new, the board, the RAM, the case, uh, all new hard drives, SD hard drives. Of course I'm going to keep my lovely widescreen monitor. This is what I edit uh, all the videos on for you guys, with Gage staring at me. A little creepy. <laughs> it's like, give me a treat all the time. So let's, I, I hate doing this, but let's get at it. I, you know why I hate doing this? I hate doing this because I'm not actually getting a new computer out of it. I'm only getting 50% of a new computer, okay? Right? The thing that's going to make the new computer run better is a video card. I can't get that. What's going to make it a little bit faster? I mean, I already have a top-of-the-line TPU, but the CPU would make it render a little faster, right? I could do those 4K videos for you guys in two minutes instead of three, right? That's the kind of guy Gary is when it comes to computer stuff. 20 years ago, I bought my first computer, and I'll tell you guys, it had an amazing, you'll never need to upgrade this, Gary, two megabyte hard drive. Megabyte. <laughs> And that, I remember the guy telling me, you'll never need to upgrade that. <laughs> so the first thing we need to do is copy. I have a 700 gigabyte SD game drive on here, and I'm going to turn that into my Windows drive for my new computer. So I'm copying everything from that to a backup drive. I, I keep a dual drive system here where, because I make videos for you guys and I don't want to lose any of the videos, I actually have a D drive and an E drive, which are mirrored images of each other. And basically, when I create a new video, it just automatically gets copied over to the second drive. So I don't lose anything. So what I'm doing is going to take the game drive out of here, and that's going to become my Windows drive. It's an SSD drive, so very fast. Uh, not as fast as an M2 drive. The new computer is getting an M2 drive. That's going to be the new game drive. So if you're not a tech guy and you don't know all these, that's okay. You still have to understand the basics, right? Step one, before we tear any computers apart, copy any essential things from the old system that you're going to need on the new one, copy them onto a separate drive. That's step one. Next tip, get all your tools, including a good light, but every screwdriver, tip, and tool that you might need, have them here ready to go. There's all the new parts that we've got to install. I actually did two and a half hours of work with this case already. I inverted it so that the see-through window is on this side, and that took a couple of hours to rehook everything up. And then I got smart and I went ahead and put in the board, which was not smart because now I have to take the board out to install the CPU. I thought I could do it with that in there, but it's going to be much easier out of the case. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so the board is out. We're actually going to leave the RAM in because I want to see if the new cooler fits over top of the RAM. Some people have had to adjust. This is the new cooler here and there's a big fan on each side and some people have had to raise one of the fans to come up over top of the RAM so we'll see if that's an issue with mine or not. I've actually got the rest of the uh, case taken apart ready to put in a new fan. I actually want to change that fan to the front and put the Noctua fan that we got here in the back. But that's a lot of work just to for aesthetics, right? I like the color of this fan. This is the one I'm going to see most of the time at the back, so I don't know. It's a lot of work for aesthetics. Speaking of aesthetics, I made a mistake. I bought a, an 80 gold rated PSU, which is what you need, right? You want the 80 gold. Well, I 
Bought the cheap one, the $100 one, not thinking, and I'll show you why it's a mistake. So there's the 700 watt uh, 80 gold thermal take. Here's the mistake. I just thought in this day and age they would all be black connectors and they're not. So that just looks horrendous. You're building a new machine that you got to look at for the next six years. You're taking all your aesthetics, your lighting and stuff into account and then you've got all these crappy yellow and red wires. So I'll have to try to hide those with some black tape I guess or I don't know. This is what I was expecting when I bought the new hard drive. Obviously this power supply here is four years old. Look at the nice black cabling. That's a thermal take power supply as well, but that's an 80 bronze. It's not even a gold. The new one is gold and it doesn't have these nice black cables. So we're going to take one of these SSD drives out of here, the 700 gigabyte. It's going in the new machine. And then we got to take this dirty old fan out of here and get the 12 core CPU that's behind there out. And unfortunately, we're gonna have to put in the 1080 into the new machine as well. Okay, Noctua fan installed on the front. And just be wary guys, if you buy those, they have a really short cable on them. So it can reach from here to this side where the fan headers are, but I wanted to plug it over here into slot number three, so I have fan one, two, and three, because I'm anal like that and it won't reach. So, and I just couldn't be bothered taking all that other fan out of there, so it is what it is. Be wary, they give you like 13 inches of cord and that's it. <coughs> I just opened the front of that computer and you should have seen the crap that came flying out of there. I can't believe, <laughs> I would love to lie and say it's been a year since I cleaned this, but it hasn't, it's been a few months, two or three months. I don't know what's going on. I bought air filters for the furnace from Amazon. Are they not working? Apparently not. This is, you know, your computer sucks everything in, right? But this is, this is beyond anything I've ever seen before. <laughs> I know reading these manuals can seem like it's, you know, another language. But then you just have to flip to the English section and then you're good to go. And in the book, it shows everything upside down because this case I'm building is backwards. So you wanna, you really wanna screw with yourself, make things difficult, build an inverted case, which is what I'm doing. The last case I was running was inverted and this one is inverted. There's a reason for that. It just allows better airflow, and if you want to have your window into your PC on, on on the right side instead of the, no, sorry, well, when you're, well, depending on which way you're looking at it, left side, right side. Anyway, inverted means your everything is upside down in the case, which allows your video card to be on the top instead of the bottom. So any heat generated by your video card, which is the biggest heat creator in there, is gonna be at the top already, ready to be sucked out by a top fan and a back fan. Do as Gary does, because Gary has broken enough crap over the years, he has learned by doing. I've always said, when I got out of college, the first thing I did was went and bought a computer and built it and put it together myself and learned how to tear everything apart. It bothered me not knowing, both the hardware side and the software side. Why do you want to do that? Because you'll save thousands of dollars over the course of your life, probably tens of thousands of dollars, by buying your own and building your own. This computer's probably going to cost me 4,500 bucks. And that's because of this year, 2020, the prices are through the roof. But if I were to buy a pre-made computer of the same quality, you'd probably be looking over $6,000. You're going to do as I say! My great-grandmother was German, okay? So that means I'm German, so I can do that accent. <laughs> so mounting the Dark Rock Pro 4 requires that you remove the AM4 mount brackets that come on the board, and you have to install these proprietary ones. They're pretty simple. It's just a spacer and then a long screw. 
I like long screw. Oh yeah, look at that. Easy peasy. Long screw. So, tip number 368. Plug your CPU power in before you put the cooler on and all the other crap because now I can't reach it. Ah, come on. All right, so I have everything plugged in. Normally I would work on a solution to hold this up, but because we're changing that card as soon as we can find a new one, I'm not gonna worry about it. I managed to get that power supply plugged in down there without taking out the whole cooler. Everything is still a mess here at the back. Look at that for cable management. How's that? Sweet. <laughs> I took the quick uh, install out of my old kit, which didn't have anywhere to screw it in, and I just pull tied it. So that'll sit in there. It'll be all nice and tight behind the cover. So what is the chance that this is actually going to turn on and work? I don't know. But here we go. We're going to we're going to attempt it. Nothing. Wait a minute! <laughs> I didn't have the switch turned on for the power supply. Let's try this again. Please, please, please. Oh yeah! Lights! Glorious RGB lights! It's noisy. Ha! Well, I'm not sure what was going on. I had two sticks of RAM in there and it wouldn't boot. I pulled one of the sticks of RAM. Ha! Ah, we have a boot screen! I think I can figure it out from here. Now can you hear this ticking? That's that fan that I told you guys it was just nicking on the, the mount in there. I'm gonna have to take that all apart. Damn it! Fix your wagon. All right, it's now eight o'clock, 12 hours. I've worked on this. It is not working. It is not going to work. It is not fixable. There is definitely something wrong with the board. One RAM slot is not working. So I just talked to them and I have to RMA it, send it in, get it fixed. Don't even get to exchange because I'm past the 30 day exchange time, which because I bought this stuff at the end of August, so now I've got to undo all of this, put it back into the old system and another. So this is about as frustrating as it can get. I hate building computers. Quick update guys, two days, 20 hours, and I never did get that new board running. If it's the board or if it's a setting, and I went through every setting, 20 hours, okay? Reseated the CPU multiple times, tried six different sticks of RAM, from one stick per slot to one stick and only one slot and each one tried every configuration. At this point, I have to say it's the board. So I'm RMAing the board in and they're gonna let me know. I called their tech support. The tech support was basically, when they listened to everything I did, the guy just started laughing. He said, yeah, just send the board in. But the problem is now I don't wanna spend another 20 hours and all the tools that I own out filling my house with a huge mess to upgrade when I get that board back, it's gonna go back in the closet and sit there because I don't have a new CPU or a new GPU to put in it. So that's the frustrations of being a computer builder in 2020. Gary failed miserably on this one, guys. It failed miserably. Unless you consider a new cooler not a fail. So we could try some heavy duty overclocking now on the old girl, but we can't risk that because if we blow it up, we got nothing to replace it with and you can't buy anything to replace it with, so. <sighs> Can't even have fun playing around with overclocking.